Hello, Grade Sevens. Helen here again, and it's time for our Natural Sciences lesson. I'm so excited to be with you today. And remember, in our last lesson, we started exploring the properties of different materials. So today we're going to pick on one property in particular, and that is strength. And we're going to examine the strength of materials in a little more detail. So you're ready for this? I hope so. Let's go. So let's have a look at some of these everyday materials and let's look at the physical property of strength. And we're going to look at whether these different everyday objects need to be strong or not. Is that a key feature of the material? So if we look at our drum or our metal barrel, it is very strong. It's large. It needs to carry a large volume of liquid. So yes, the drum needs to be very strong. We discussed in our last lesson that the pot needs to be strong. But maybe the mug doesn't need to be as strong as the pot because it's only going to carry a small volume of liquid. How about the bathtub? Does that need to be strong? Oh yes. If you're a really big guy and you get into the bath, you don't want to dent the bottom of the bath or have the bottom of the bath fall out. That bath has to be very strong. What about our cauldron can? That doesn't have to be very, very strong. The frame of the bicycle has to be extremely strong. Otherwise, the person is going to sit on the bicycle and bend the frame and the bicycle won't work and they might fall off and have an accident. However, we also need a different property along with strength. We need it to be light, lightweight. So we can see that different objects are stronger than others depending on what they're made out of, the material they're made out of, and depending on what they function or use is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make some predictions. Predictions are always used in science. What do we mean by a prediction? A prediction means something that we think is true and then we can investigate it and we can find out if our prediction was correct or incorrect. And it doesn't matter if your prediction was incorrect. It was only a prediction. Once you've done your investigation, you can say, yep, I was right, or mm, no, I wasn't right. Let me try it again. So we're going to look at these paper objects. So they're all made out of different kinds of paper. And we're going to try and think which we believed to be the strongest form of the paper and which is the least strong. Shall we do this? What about the cardboard that makes up a cereal box? Do you think that that's the strongest or the least strong material or does it actually maybe just hover somewhere in the middle? The cardboard that makes up a box for transporting goods, is that going to be stronger than a cereal box or is it going to be weaker? Well, I think I'd like to predict that the cardboard box is going to be stronger than the cereal box. Have a look at this kind of cardboard. Can you see that it's got corrugations in it. I'm going to give you the spelling up here. Corrugated cardboard and corrugated cardboard is reinforced. A piece of cardboard is laid down. Another piece of cardboard that has corrugations or waves in it is glued to that piece of cardboard and another piece of cardboard on the top. So I think that corrugated cardboard is maybe much stronger than an ordinary cardboard box. What about 
this milk, uh, sorry, <laughs> egg carton, not a milk carton, an egg carton. What about the egg carton? Is that strong? Where does it fit in here? Is it stronger than the cereal box? Or is it easier to crumple up than the cereal box? Is it stronger than the cardboard box? Where are we going to put it? Is it as strong as corrugated cardboard? Where are we going to put this egg box? I'm going to make the prediction that the egg box is the strongest cardboard. What about toilet paper? Do you think toilet paper is very strong or is it far less strong? than an egg carton or a cereal box. I'm going to put the toilet paper right down at the bottom. What about the paper that makes up the pages in the book? I think that paper that makes up pages in a book is a little bit stronger than toilet paper, but not as strong as the cereal box. So these are my predictions. Maybe you made different predictions. That's fine. You don't have to worry about somebody else's predictions. You focus on what you think and as long as you've got reasons, as we went through these reasons, for making those predictions, that's fine. What we now have to do with our prediction is we have to test it. And here comes the fun part of science, the investigation. So we have just predicted which paper objects are the strongest, and which are weaker. We are now going to test that prediction with an investigation. So let's get on with our investigation. And I'd like to challenge you to do this investigation at home today after our lesson. Make up your list of predictions and then test them. So, shall we do this together? Let's go. You're going to need samples of different kinds of paper. So, I've just brought two for you today. I've brought a cereal box paper and ordinary paper that your notes would be made out of school or pages in a book. You are going to go and try and get other kinds of materials as well. Other kinds of paper, maybe that egg carton, maybe you've got a piece of cardboard box, anything that you would like to test with the investigation. So that's the first thing on our list. You go and you get together all your different samples of paper. You will need a strong paper clip. All right, so here is my paper clip and it's quite big and it is quite strong. All right, you'll need a nice strong paper clip. You will need an empty plastic tub. I've used one of these little tubs that is like an acha tub or a little tub to put leftover sweets in, but you can use a, a yogurt tub that you're going to wash out and dry and make sure that it's nice and clean. You then need some marbles, or small stones, and these are the ones that I'm going to use today. They're pretty little glass stones. You can use ordinary stones that you find in the garden, as long as they're more or less the same size. And we're going to need a short piece of string. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to construct our apparatus to make our strength tester. And I'm very grateful to my daughters, Beth and Chloe, who constructed this for me yesterday. All right, so what we did was we connected the plastic tub to the bottom of the paper clip with a little bit of string. We then connected it to one of our paper samples. So if I was to hold it up, for you like this, you would see that I've made a little basket attached to my paper sample. Let's have a look at the picture. We've got the sample of paper. We've got our paper clip. We have the little bit of string. And we have our tub, our yoga tub, or our little plastic tub. 
Now we're going to do the strength test. We are going to hold up our little basket and we're going to hold our sample of paper at the top. We're then going to take one little marble or stone at a time and we're going to start loading them into our basket. What's going to happen here is that our basket gets heavier and heavier and it's going to put quite a bit of string on our paper. How many more of these is it going to take before this paper starts to break? This piece of paper is very strong. All right, so, so far, well, nothing's broken yet. But I can see, and I don't know if you can see, that it's starting to tear the hole here at the top or at the bottom of the paper where the little um, paper clip was attached. So now I've got a feeling that when I add this last marble, that this is going to break. It's starting to tear and it's starting to tear. And if I had another one and I put it in, it would break. Then what I have to do is I have to count how many marbles it took to break that sample of paper. Two, four, six. It took seven to break my paper. Now I'm going to use the cardboard and I'm going to thread it onto my paper clip and hang my little basket from it. And I'm going to start adding the marbles. And of course, I'm going to add the marbles until the cereal box cardboard also breaks. And I think you can see that what is going to happen is that certain papers are going to break quicker or sooner or with less marbles in our little basket than other papers. So you're going to then use our apparatus to test all of your samples of paper. And you can then go back to your prediction and you can say, well, I thought that the corrugated cardboard was the strongest form of paper. But in fact, I found out that the egg box was stronger than the corrugated paper and so on. And you can test your predictions. Are you going to do this at home today? I hope so. And you should have a lot of fun doing it as well. Let's think about the properties of materials and their suitability for different uses. Is the strength of paper used suitable for its function? Remember, the pages of the book need to be lightweight. They also need to be very flexible. So we're looking at a fairly weak paper. But what about the cover of the book? The cover of the book needs to be much stronger than the paper in order to support and protect the paper of the pages. We've discussed that our cereal box does need to be stronger than ordinary paper, but not that strong because when we're finished with our cereal, we want to fold the box up and we want to throw it away. The egg box carton has to be really strong because it's protecting those delicate, fragile eggs inside it. And we'll end off today with the toilet paper. Must this be strong? Many reasons why we don't want it strong. You wouldn't be able to tear it off if it was too strong. And also, when we threw it into the toilet, it wouldn't disintegrate and break down and it would block our sewage system. So toilet paper needs to be very weak. I hope you've had some fun and I really challenge you to go and do our investigation today. And I'll see you next time for our next Natural Sciences lesson. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.